If you want to know what industry is most in disarray, I think, and has the most jobs at risk, it's the restaurant business, the hospitality business. So let's bring in former Starbucks chairman and CEO Howard Schultz, who knows more about this area than most. Howard, always good to see you. Hey, Jim, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about the plate fund. Well, let's do that because there is a gap between when people may get money from their employers, may not, given the fact that restaurants are shoosting operations. And it is important for people to kick in because this group is very disenfranchised. Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, well, as you know all too well, uh, the spread of the coronavirus has created uh, unprecedented economic carnage and fear among restaurant workers uh, across the country. Uh, as a result of that, in greater Seattle, there's 100,000 people who are unemployed. What we're trying to do is create the most innovative way to bridge the gap between the stimulus package and get cash in the hands of restaurant workers as soon as possible. So the Plate Fund launched today. Uh, we will create an opportunity to get $500 of cash uh, to restaurant workers, the most needy, uh, within 48 hours. It's not meant, obviously, to create enough sustenance, but these people are suffering from food insecurity, home instability. And I think uh, given the spread of the coronavirus, we have to recognize one thing. It's not only the ability to try and flatten the curve of the health crisis, but we must flatten the curve of economic despair. And that is what we're trying to do in Greater Seattle. Well, I'm so glad uh, you are. We had uh, Stephen Sing on, on Friday night uh, from All In Seattle, used to be CEO of Concur. Yeah. And, and what's pretty clear is that you guys are ahead of everybody else. I'm wondering if that's because you were the original epicenter of the pandemic. Well, I think that's true. I, I think uh, there's a few things here. I think uh, it started very early here. Uh, Friday was the third week in which restaurant workers have not gotten a paycheck. Uh, and as a result of just recognizing the unbelievable crisis economically and talking to restaurant workers, talking to restaurant owners, and members of the greater Seattle business community, we band together to try and do everything we can to create the most innovative program possible to get money in the hands of people who need it. And I, I think uh, so many people have been on your show and people are doing great things, but it's, it's not a time for politics. Uh, it's a time to band together, to get hope to people who need it most, and most importantly, to demonstrate shared humanity across every single spectrum of our society. And uh, this is a time really where we really, really, we must come together and recognize we're going to get through this, but we also have to dig deep to help those people who can't help themselves. Howard, are, are, are the people big enough? In other words, is this a problem that uh, we're get, bridging a gap between we hope the money will go to these people or not? Because as someone who owns two restaurants, I can tell you every restaurant is trying to make up a their mind. Do we stay open? Do we not stay open? Do we go to the bank? Maybe they know us. Maybe they don't. Do we get an SBA number? Maybe we don't. Do we fight for the money or is it worth it? Uh, the restaurant workers, they just want to work. Uh, the, uh, the, I just feel like that there's the possibility that, that uh, the bridge won't be, it'll be a bridge to nowhere because the restaurants won't reopen. Well, I think you're bringing up a great point. Uh, I think uh, most restaurants, unfortunately, Uh, operate month to month, quarter to quarter. These are small business people who have sacrificed so much entrepreneurially to build their business. And now that they're facing an economic crisis where, candidly, many of them may not be able to open. However, the restaurant workers are a community in every restaurant, a sense of family. And what I've learned in the last couple of weeks as we were putting the plate together, plate fund together, is that there's an unbelievable level of concern and empathy and compassion not only for the restaurant owners, for their own business, but most importantly, the demonstration of what they're trying to do for their own people. We have restaurants in Seattle who are suffering, may not be open, and yet they're opening their restaurant at night to feed their own people. This is the kind of humanity that we need in the country and what we're trying to do. But we, we have to recognize that stimulus is going to come, but it's going to be late. We have to find an innovative way to get cash. And the plate fund, unlike most other Uh, things that have been developed is an opportunity to get cash in the hands of people within 48 hours. They need money and they need it now. They can't put food on their table. And this is a problem. The other issue, and I think I hate to bring this up, but it's a reality. Across the country, we are beginning to see storefronts being boarded up. What does that mean? People are getting concerned about what happens if people don't have food on their table, money to feed their family. We must do something to get cash in the hands of people now 
to bridge the gap between stimulus and assistance. They need money now. Well, at the same time, I hope you won't mind a question about uh, the, the Starbucks model, because anybody who's read your books or knows how you started the company knows that this notion of a third place, a gathering place, is a cornerstone of the model. And I'm wondering, yeah. how does that not directly collide with the fear of gathering that we're currently and will be in for some time? Well, I think, Carl, you bring up a good point. Uh, I think it's clear to me that uh, when we get through this, and we will, the pattern recognition of what we once had for consumer behavior will be changed. However, uh, I, I think people will be longing for human connection. People will be longing for a sense of community and a third place. And I think Starbucks will benefit from that opportunity. But it will take time for people to feel comfortable again. But we are all longing, again. I think, for the people that we see every day at work, for our friends and family. And I think that is going to be an opportunity when we get through this. But I think it's true. It will take some time for people to feel comfortable again to go back to the pattern they once had. Howard, it's David Faber. Um, back to restaurants for a moment. Of course, supporting the workers right now is, is paramount. But I wonder when we get back to some sense of normalcy, and you are a restaurant owner, you're going to need capital to reopen. It's not like you're just going to be able to flick a switch. Uh, do you agree with that? Do you think the capital will be there? And is that a concern as well? Well, it absolutely is a concern. I mean, uh, can't, thankfully, Starbucks has the balance sheet and the resources to manage through the most severe uh, situation. But I think for most restaurant owners, you're correct. And I think one thing that I would hope the government and the stimulus package would look like in the second and third tranche is a backstop to provide landlords and, and, and banks the opportunity to forego not only the rent in the short term, but give an opportunity for these restaurant operators to open in a way in which rent is forgiven. But if we don't provide a backstop for the restaurants, I suspect that we could see a situation around the country in which approximately 30 percent or more of small independent retailers and or restaurants never reopen. And the value that these restaurants and small businesses uh, operate and the value they create for their community is not only the value of people coming into their business, it's employment, it's vendors, it's all the people who support them, not to mention the, the intrinsic value of neighborhoods and community gathering. And so we can't have a scorched earth situation in which 30 to 40 percent of restaurants and small businesses do not reopen. And I would hope that the government and the Senate and the Congress are looking at ways to recognize that we must not only flatten the curve of the health crisis, but we must begin to flatten the curve of economic despair for restaurant owners, small businesses, and most importantly, the 10 million people now who have filed for unemployment, who are dying and in despair for cash now. Howard, I know that you are a, a shrewd observer of not just uh, restaurants, but also retail in general, uh, and you're also uh, near the headquarters of Costco. Uh, do we not run the risk that there'll be Costco, there'll be Walmart, and another one in your, uh, that you're friendly with, Amazon, that only three of them make it? Maybe Target makes it. Uh, they're the only ones that have the balance sheets to make it. Is, is, are we going to come out with three or four retailers? Well, I think there's great risk in the fact that the independent retailers who compete every day uh, and who are disadvantaged by that kind of scale of Walmart or Amazon or Costco, they are going to need assistance. And we don't want to get to a situation where the consumer today only has two or three choices. And so this, th this is a moment in time, and the crisis is now, in which the planning, the foresight, the empathy, and the compassion for small business owners must be taken in, into consideration in everything we're trying to do. So when we come out of this, not only do we have normalcy in terms of getting through the health crisis, but doing it in a way in which the economic environment is fair and equitable for every person who has worked so hard to build their business before the crisis and the health issue uh, occurred. Our opening bell there, Howard, as we're talking to you. Uh, we'll take a look at, uh, at the market in a moment. Really quick, Austria is now the first European country to sort of roll out a timetable for reopening. Small shops as early as next week, uh, higher risk shops like hair salons on May 1, restaurants in mid-May, 
Is that the kind of conversation we should be having in this country today? I don't think so. I, I think Bill Gates got it exactly right. Uh, and, and he's been saying this now for weeks. Uh, the country, in my view, would be best served if there was a federal mandate and we were shut down. And we allowed the opportunity, as we saw in South Korea and we saw in China, for the crisis and the health issue to be contained in a way in which we were doing everything we could to flatten the curve. Uh, I, I think that is not going to work in, in America. Austria is a much smaller country. I, I don't see it. And I think every day that goes by in which nine states are not reopening is, is problematic. Uh, but, you know, I'm not here to talk about politics. I am here to talk about shared humanity. And we must find a way to do everything possible to get cash in the hands of people who need it most. And I think for every American, uh, let's try and dig deep and walk in the shoes of people who, unfortunately, at this point in time, can't help themselves. Let's do everything we can to help them. And that's what the Plate Fund is designed to do in Greater Seattle. Yeah, uh, just one uh, thing, Howard, you saved, I uh, want to point out, you saved our viewers a bit money, a fortune. You questioned luck in coffee very early on. Uh, it turned out that it was a fraud. And I think that sometimes we live in the world again where I, I have mad money. I have nothing I can do. And I want to thank you for recognizing who does well, which is Starbucks in China, and who was making up numbers. And you were very wise to it. And uh, my viewers, thank you. Well, and I, I, in, in saying that, I, I don't want to in any way uh, say that every company that starts up in China is a bad company. But I think this company uh, from the very beginning was saying and doing things to me that this did not smell right. Uh, but having said that, I think Starbucks, uh, although I'm not directly involved, did demonstrate a, a way to navigate, navigate through China, in which now over 90 percent of our stores are reopened. And I think that will serve us well uh, as we navigate through the, the coronavirus crisis. But I also, I, you know, I've watched the show every day, and I think you've done a wonderful job in framing the issues and also carrying the torch for the fact that there, there's two issues here, the pandemic of the coronavirus and the pandemic of economic fear, uncertainty, and despair. And the two must go parallel together to come out of this hole for the American people. Well, thank you, Howard. Thank you for those kind words. And, and the plate is right, because what people have to recognize is that, they, as you are as the Plate Fund founder, these are the most disenfranchised. These are the people who right now have nothing. This morning they wake up, they have nothing. They have no hope for a job. They have no money in their bank account. And the only thing they can look forward is the kindness of strangers like you, because you care tremendously. Thank you for coming on the show, Howard. Real, always good to see thank, you. Thank you, guys. Stay healthy and stay safe, you and your families. Thank you so thank much. Thank you.